Hello everyone. This video is about congenital or developmental glaucoma. But before really moving on to glaucoma, let's revise some structures of the eyeball. So this is the eyeball here. It is divided into two segments, anterior segment and posterior segment. In front of the lens is the anterior segment and behind the lens is the posterior segment. The anterior segment, it is again further divided into two chambers. We have the posterior chamber. So this is the chamber between the lens and the iris. And then we have the anterior chamber, which is between iris and the cornea. So it is the iris which divides the anterior segment into posterior chamber and anterior chamber. The anterior segment is filled with fluid called aqueous humor and posterior segment is filled with vitreous humor. So this is the vitreous humor. An aqueous humor is actually the one which is responsible for maintenance of pressure inside the eye. It is produced by ciliary uh, processes here. From the ciliary processes, the aqueous humor, it flows into the posterior chamber. And from the posterior chamber, it flows into anterior chamber through this gap called pupil. And uh, in this corner of the anterior chamber, this is, uh, here is an angle-like structure, which is made by iris and the cornea. This is the iridocorneal angle. There are certain structures present in this angle, which are responsible for drainage of the aqueous humor. So if there is a... Uh, overproduction of the aqueous humor or if there is less drainage of the aqueous humor this can lead to accumulation of this fluid into these chambers and this can increase the pressure inside the eye let's briefly discuss about the drainage system of the aqueous humor so here i am in blue i have drawn cornea and this is the iris and the angle between them is the iridocorneal angle so here is the anterior chamber which is filled with aqueous humor and on the base of this uh, iridocorneal angle, we have this structure. This is the trabecular meshwork. Through this trabecular meshwork, the aqueous humor will flow into the sac-like structure. This is called the canal of Schlem. From the canal of Schlem, it is drained through the aqueous veins into episcleral veins. So this is how the aqueous humor is drained from anterior chamber to episcleral veins. So now coming on to congenital glaucoma. So in congenital glaucoma, by birth, there is obstruction to angle of anterior chamber. Then this interferes with the drainage of the aqueous humor, which leads to abnormally high intraocular pressure. Developmental glaucoma is when glaucoma occurs several years after birth. Congenital or developmental glaucoma can be of two types, primary and secondary. Primary is when it is not associated with any other anomalies. There is defect in the uh, in the chamber angle of the anterior chamber which leads to uh, impaired drainage of the aqueous humor in case of primary uh, glaucoma without associated anomalies but in case of secondary glaucoma it is associated with other anomalies which might include uh, congenital ocular anomalies or systemic anomalies so first let's talk about primary congenital or developmental glaucoma so there is a developmental anomaly of angle of anterior chamber and since it's a primary type there is not it is not associated with any other ocular or systemic anomaly and it is also divided into different types depending on the age of onset newborn glaucoma or true congenital glaucoma so in this type of glaucoma the intraocular pressure is raised during intrauterine life okay? so the child is born with ocular enlargement due to pressure inside the eye uh, due to since the pressure inside the eye is raised this will enlarge the eye and it is seen in about 40 percent of the cases infantile glaucoma is when there is raised intraocular pressure in children of less than three years old it is seen in almost about 55 percent of the cases juvenile glaucoma is when intraocular pressure is raised in children from three years to before they get uh, adulthood and this is seen in rest of the cases that is five percent Let's talk about this term called bufthalmus. Bufthalmus is enlargement of the eye, which is seen in children of age less than three years old, and it is due to increase in intraocular pressure. So you can appreciate in this picture here, this large cornea determines there is enlarged eye in this child. So bufthalmus is when there is increase in the intraocular pressure in children of less than three years old, this will enlarge the eye. The eye will appear bull-like, hence the name bufthalmus. Now let's talk about the pathogenesis of the congenital glaucoma. The trabeculum, it's the structure which is responsible for drainage of the aqueous humor. It develops from neural crest cells. 
So when there is mal development of trabeculum, this is called trabeculo dyssenesis. So if and if there is trabecular dyssenesis, this will lead to impaired drainage of aqueous humor, which will result in increase in intraocular pressure of the eye. The trabecular dyssenesis is when there is insertion of iris directly into the trabeculum. If this is the cornea and if this is the iris, in between there is this structure called trabecular meshwork. Trabecular dyssenesis occurs when this iris it uh, inserts into the trabeculum like this this will impair the flow of the aqueous humor through the trabeculum and this will lead to increasing intraocular pressure so the trabecular dyssenesis could be uh, either due to flat iris insertion or concave iris insertion so flat iris insertion when the iris inserts flatly in the trabeculum a concave iris insertion when the superficial iris tissue sweeps over the trabeculum now talking about the clinical features, it can be LPB or lacrimation, photophobia and blepharospasm. Blepharospasm means involuntary blinking of the eyeball. And often these three symptoms, they occur together and they form this classic triad of symptoms of congenital glaucoma. Now under the corneal signs, we have corneal edema. There can be corneal enlargement where the diameter of cornea can increase up to 13 millimeter. The normal diameter of cornea is around 10.5 millimeter and the prognosis is poor if it is more than 16 millimeter. Under the corneal signs, there can also be Habs stria. Habs stria is tear and breaks in Desmet's membrane. We know Desmet's membrane is one of the layer of cornea and it, since it is the less elastic layer and there is corneal enlargement, then this layer will tear off and it will form Habs stria, which you can appreciate here. These two horizontal lines in this picture here, this represents the Habs stria. And since there is enlargement of the eye, the sclera, it becomes thin and uh, due to exposure of the underlying uveal tissue, it will appear blue. In iris, there can be iridodonesis, which means vibration of iris with eye movement. The lens, it may become flat anterior posteriorly due to stretching of the zonules. Let me explain it in this picture here. So this green structure, it is the lens and it is suspended by these uh, zonules. So in glaucoma, there is enlargement of the eye, which means these zonules will stretch the lens in this direction. So the lens will get flatter in this direction, that is the anterior posteriorly. So the lens will be flat anterior posteriorly in congenital glaucoma and in optic disc there can be copying and atrophy in my previous video of glaucoma overview i've discussed about disc copying so you can check it out in that video it is a characteristic feature of glaucoma and of course there is large eyeball or bufthalmus now on the examination the examination is done under general anesthesia which includes measurement of intraocular pressure so the intraocular pressure is increased in glaucoma and it is measured by tonometer. Since there is corneal enlargement, measurement of corneal diameter by calipers is done. Slit lamp examination is done to identify any defect inside the eye. Ophthalmoscopy to evaluate the optic disc and gonioscopic examination to reveal trabecular dyssenesis or to observe structures of the angle of anterior chamber. Under differential diagnosis, if there is large cornea, it can also be due to megalocornea. Megalocornea is a condition when there is increase in cornea, but it's not due to increased intraocular pressure. So the pressure inside the eye is normal, but if there is in, uh, enlargement of the cornea, it's megalocornea. If there is lacrimation, it can be due to congenital nasolacrimal duct blockage. So this needs to be ruled out. Photophobia might be due to keratitis or uveitis. Cloudy cornea or hazy cornea, which is also one of the signs of congenital glaucoma, its most common cause is trauma. Increase in intraocular pressure can also be due to retinoblastoma or persistent primary hyperplastic vitreous. Now coming on to the treatment section, the definitive treatment for congenital glaucoma is surgery. And the surgery includes incisional angle surgery, which can be performed through goniotomy and trabeculectomy. Filtration surgery, which includes trabeculectomy with antimetabolites or combined trabeculotomy and trabeculectomy with antimetabolites. Medical treatments, they are not given often since they are not very effective. However, they can be given to lower intraocular pressure until surgery is taken up. And these includes 
hyperosmotic agents such as glycerol, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors such as acetazolamide, beta blockers such as timolol. Myotics are not used since they can paradoxically increase the intraocular pressure. And also alpha-2 agonists such as brimonidine is also not uh, prescribed since they can cause CNS depression in children. So that much for primary congenital glaucoma. Now coming on to secondary developmental glaucomas. So since it's a secondary type, it is associated with other ocular or systemic anomalies. Now I'm not going to go into detail about this. I'm just going to name them. So under the ocular anomalies, we have glaucoma associated with aniridia, glaucoma associated with familial iris hypoplasia, and glaucoma associated with congenital atropian uvea. Under the systemic, uh, systemic anomalies, we have glaucoma associated with chromosomal disorders such as Edwards syndrome, Down syndrome, and Turner syndrome. Glaucoma associated with ectopia lentis syndrome, which includes Marfan syndrome and homocystinuria. And glaucoma associated with phacomatosis and glaucoma associated with metabolic syndromes such as Hurler syndrome, Lewis syndrome, and Jill Weger syndromes. So that's it for congenital glaucoma. Thank you.